Color Shifting Necron Warriors. Man, this color shift paint is just so cool. Hey, my name is Troy and welcome to Facility D20 where we're always making cool stuff and today we're gonna make some badass killer robots so cool it might bring Ernie out of retirement. Now hopefully James Cameron don't send GW a cease and desist order. We're gonna be using some Vallejo color shift paints to make a really cool special paint job. Come on in guys and let's get at it. These warriors came out of the Indominus box set that I picked up for some scalpers on eBay for only $1,500. First thing I gotta do is assemble these things and I got the ultimate hack to assemble these Necron warriors. You're gonna to wanna to check this out. You really gotta follow the directions here because each of these warriors got certain parts due to the push fit nature and they all gotta go together a certain way. Went ahead and clipped all the parts out. Cleaned up any sprue marks. Shaved down any mold lines. Now I just poked them in the base for now. We're gonna come back to these bases in a little bit. Then I glued the head to the chest. Then I just made sure I cleaned up this little part of the gun so that it fit in the slot nicely. And here comes the big hack. You gotta go ahead and cut off this part of the arm. The part that's supposed to push fit in the chest, just go ahead and cut that completely off. Then just glue the one arm, push fit it into place. the chest on, pull that loose arm, put a bit of glue on and jam it up in the socket and that's the hack. Can't even notice it, it makes assembly way easier. It's got like two steps, what did you expect? Then I had to get assembling. There was 20 of these bad boys to put together and this took me pretty much the entire night. Go ahead and like this video. It really helps little channels out. Thanks. Then it was time for some Krylon Gloss Black and it's really important to use Gloss Black if you're gonna use the Vallejo Color Shift paints. And it's really important to use black. Then it was time for the old gold, the gray, violet Color Shift paint. Make sure you shake this up real well before you use it. When thinning my paints for my airbrush, I always like to mix in a separate pot. Use some thinner first, this time I'm using Windex, then add my paint after. Give it a good stir around and basically you're looking for the consistency of skim milk. I like to always test the drop on a piece of paper to make sure I got it to the consistency I need. Perfect. Then this thing had to be laid down in three coats. first coat you can see the color starting to come to life a little bit but it's a lot darker and doesn't have a lot of metallic yet. The second coat it starts to brighten up. You can start to see some of the color shifting taking place. And then finally the third coat. The third coat is where this really starts to pop. I made sure I painted all the parts up and under on top everywhere. I wasn't looking to make shadows here. I was looking to get a lot of coverage for this metallic paint. Looking pretty good so far. Time for the rest of the details. I went in with some gunmetal metal and picked out a lot of the details of these Necron Warriors. There were parts about the legs, the ankles, 
the kneecaps. There are little bits up by the hips and the shins. There are also um, parts up along the back, along the spinal column. Make sure I hit all those with metal. And this is just to add some contrasting colors because the metallics are so bright on the Vallejo color shift. It just helps ease the eye a little. And up and under the stomach area, I painted all that as well. Forearms. And little bits of the gun here and there, and some wires. Next, it was some Nol Oil, and this was to wash all that down and to darken it up. I actually gave this two coats of Nol Oil. And this really brings it to details. You want to be careful when you're using this though, not to um, waste a lot of it onto the parts that are painted with the color shift paint because it'll dull it out and the color won't shift as well. If you make any mistakes, you can go in with the Vallejo color shift and do some touch-ups, but it just don't work the same with a brush as it do with an airbrush, but you can do some touch-ups with it. Next, I went in with some Vallejo air gray and I painted uh, the guns. The guns and the gun handle, and this was just so I can work this down to black. So I laid down a gray first, and then I went ahead with no oil, and I washed this three times to bring this gray right down to a black color. You can see here I'm applying the second wash. I did this one more time after this. Then it was a blade of gold, and I debated painting the shoulders as well, but I just, I just painted the centerpiece on the chest. Some sapia to wash the gold, to bring it the colors with some shadows. And then a little polished gold dry brush just to pick the details out. Hey guys, this channel is really rolling now and it's thanks to subscribers like you guys. So if you like what you see, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We got a lot of cool content coming. Next up was Beholder Purple and I did a little bit of OSL lighting along the gun. I uh, just wanted it to be subtle here. I didn't want to shoot it all over the mini or over the base. I just want a little bit of a glow effect on the gun. I also hit the eyes a little bit with a low pressure and a little shot of purple on each eye. And then you can see it kind of looked like this when I was uh, done with the airbrush. Then I went in with some Citadel Violet wash and just placed it in the recesses of the guns. Picked out the eyeballs a little bit. And then I went in with a 50-50 purple and white mix and just hit the guns and the eyeballs with just a little touch of this light white color just to kind of make that glow effect pop a little bit more. And that's what I was looking like for the OSL lighting. Batch painting 20 guys sucks. So I've been fighting the urge like this last week to go in with this silver and do an extra highlight. But I'm like, I got so many projects, I just don't want to do it. Let me know in the comments, guys, if that's something you, f you struggle with, just wanting to do more and more and not knowing when to quit. So I got a really cool idea for some city bases. You're going to want to stick around and see. But first, here comes the self-plug because I started a Patreon account that I'm super excited about. So guys, check this out. So guys, I think it's finally time that I start my Patreon account. I'm really excited to start this Patreon account. There's going to be some really cool benefits and tiers and rewards over there. Just check some of this stuff out, what I'm planning to do. This account is going to be jam-packed full of cool stuff. We're going to have exclusive polls, exclusive posts, any STL files that I design and create, I'm going to upload here like these dungeon tiles. We're going to have exclusive videos, behind the scenes videos. You're going to help shape the direction of my YouTube channel. I can't wait. I think this is going to allow me to build even better projects, go even bigger with my 3D printing, take all that knowledge and give it to you guys. So please take a second and check it out and consider signing up.
I used some mesh tape for plastering and applied it to the bases to kind of make this rebar cracked pavement look. I used some cork board, glued it to the base, just cracked it up and glued little chunks on. Used my scissors to just snip up this mesh tape a little bit to make it look like uh, torn and twisted rebar. Pulled a little bit up so that it would poke up through the pavement. Glued some more cork board in place and just continue to working on the bases like this, just at random here. Cutting up that mesh tape again in a jagged fashion and pretty much put a little bit of rubble, a little bit of fine rocks on there and that was my bases. Then I primed them black, used some dungeon stone gray and just gave them a real fast quick overbrush. Use some gunmetal to paint the mesh tape, and I also washed that with sapia to make it look a little bit rusty. Once that was done, I glued the dudes on the base, and I don't like to pin my bottles because I can't be arsed to do it. I just glue them straight to the base. If they fall and pop off, then usually they don't break. Then I use a little bit of Elmer's white glue, apply some forest green flock to the base. Got some of these Army Painter Wasteland Tufts. A little bit of white glue and place them on the bases. And here they are in all their color shifting glory. You can see they're going from the green gold to violet. This is super hard to capture on camera. It's just really hard to capture on camera, but these things look really cool in real life. The metallics just pop and the purple is nice and subtle. The bases look really cool. Really happy with how these turned out, and all in all, it's a pretty quick paint job. And they look sick on the tabletop. Guys, I got a really cool video coming up. It's uh, gonna be some 3D printing, and it's gonna involve some robots. So you wanna hit subscribe and check that out. Also, check out some of these other videos on my channel. I'm gonna link them right here. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, we're gonna be making cool stuff in the facility.